Thank you. May I invite Dr. P.K. Thomas next, please? Good afternoon, all. I know very well that this is not the right time to talk about stomach. Uh, bear with me and I'll, I'll try to finish within the time. Respected Chair, Senior Surgeons, Colleagues and uh, Dear Residents, Sleeve or MGB, whichever you do, it should be the surgeon's choice, not the patient's choice. In my presentation, I think I'll uh, compare the benefits and demerits of these two procedures and we will discuss. Maybe that is the best way. Sleeve, as you know, is an established procedure around almost 20 years. Uh, it has stood the test of time and giving good results. Uh, on the other hand, MGB, MGB, though it was started in 1997, but it took many uh, years to uh, get established or it's not established even now. By 2015 only it became, started becoming popular. Uh, so, I think I see many of the young surgeons and residents, I'll go from, start from the basics. This is sleeve. What is sleeve? This is creation of a stomach tube, which is with a capacity of around 100 to 120 ml. The redundant stomach is uh, removed, retrieved and discarded. MGB, as you all know, is a stomach pouch with capacity of around 40 to 50 ml in the lesser curvature region. And uh, the biliopancreatic limb is measured out and a gastrogygenostomy is performed. So we'll go for a small video just to see. It's an animated video. This is sleeve gastrectomy being done. So that is the transection line with staplers and the rest of the stomach is removed. So the capacity will be around 100 to 120. So this is MGB. So a gastric pouch is made out, a thin and slender gastric pouch. The capacity may be around 40 to 50 ml. And uh, the rest of the stomach will be remaining there. You will measure out a length of biliopancreatic limb and the jejunum as a loop is anastomosed with the gastric pouch. So when the patient is eating, the food goes into the efferent loop and uh, the secreted enzymes will come and join it and the biliopancreatic limb is bypassed. So coming to the worldwide statistics, sleeve is still the king. More than 50% of bariatric cases done is coming under sleeve. RYGB close behind, mainly done in United States. And MGB, this is worldwide statistics, most of the South, South Asia and uh, in India, MGB is catching up very well. Now, why surgeons prefer sleeve? These are the advantages, uh, easy and simple, reproducible, low morbidity and mortality, no issue of remnant stomach, eliminate ghrelin because you are taking off the fundal region, normal anatomy is maintained, very important, access to biliary passage is easy, choice in the extremes of age, advantages in vegetarians, now the list continues, vitamin B12 absorption is normal, dumping syndrome rare, eliminates stomal ulcers because there is no stoma, normal protein absorption, choice in high risk comorbid conditions in unfavorable anatomy, in inflammatory bowel disease and redo surgery is easy and there are multiple options available. There are disadvantages for sleeve also, inadequate weight loss, this is the most limiting factor, revision may be required in case of higher BMIs. Leak is a major concern. Staple related complication, we don't have anything, we don't have any other surgeries with such a long staple line, any complication can occur. It is irreversible because you are removing the redundant stomach. 
gastroesophageal reflux disease and corrosive erosive uh, esophagitis is also there now mgb or uh, one anastomosis gastric bypass uh, it has been only uh, since 2015 so long term uh, studies are not available it's already started to coming it's major durable weight loss agreed easy to perform low failure rate in expert hands maybe minimal retching and omitting very questionable a good exit policy is there very high patient satisfaction also uh, not uh, supported low risk of ulcer never because uh, stromal ulcers and marginal ulcers are there common and never we never do mgb in a smoker male smoker better t2 type 2 diabetic resolution is supported now advantages mgb for fat metabolism is i mean uh, malabsorption is there and low cholesterol cvas are less fewer addition and hernia now the recent studies show hernias are around more than 2.5% in uh, mgb also so disadvantages uh, of mgb gastric reflux bile gastritis severe malnutrition intractable ulcers there is a carcinoma risk because of this biliary gastritis short loop bubble effect is uh, very much because the patient satisfaction the the patient starts passing oily motion uh, very offensive smelling uh, motion and body fluids and gaseous this thing so patient satisfaction and there is depressive also so i have gone through few of the studies this is done in uh, ils in calcutta where uh, om tantia and uh, tamonas and uh, podar doctor are they are doing a good amount of mgbs and uh, rygbs and sleeves so another study also there few all these concludes that sleeve and mgb are safe and uh, easy to perform surgeries with almost equal benefits mgb has a very good uh, upper hand on uh, control remission of t2 diabetes and uh, uh, also a long term sustained weight loss so these three sur uh, surgeries you are very familiar one is the bilroth 2 and the second is the admeson's uh, gastric loop bypass these two are the surgeries which are which were compared to mgb when the studies from mgb are not available and these are dismal uh uh, uh, uh uh this are all uh, this second one admersen is actually uh, obsolete and discarded because of the biliary uh, retching and biliary gastritis the other one is the when whenever the loop is converted to a bypass all the symptoms uh, gets uh, over and uh, the patient get becomes better the moment so what you understand it is the it is the loop that is the culprit so rutledge himself has brought out this article because he says that what you do and what me do mgbs are not mgbs they are not mgbs but gastric bypasses only so he has given the correct way of doing the uh, uh, mgbs to minimize the complications uh, tricks in mgb one anastomosis gb it was actually designed to bring down complications and uh, the operation time of uh, rygb it is said and you can do it in many ways the one is uh, the the afferent loop is in the left side the other is in the right side the stoma the three critical two three four critical things you should take care in mgb are the stomal size the length of the uh, stomach pouch the anti reflex stitch and also the length of the bilio pancreatic loop so this is the ideal method given and the original one so at least the, it should be 15 cm long any any length which is less than 9 cm will definitely go give you a bad result and a biliary gastritis the bilio pancreatic length given is 200 to 350 the patient will have severe malnutrition now it is a consensus that 40% of the uh, small bowel length total small bowel length is taken as the bilio pancreatic it comes around 150 to 170 or 200 cm actually so the take home messages <coughs> i think sleeve gastrectomy is still the procedure of choice in extremes of age inflammatory bowel disease anatomical deformities and super obese as staged procedure 
sleeve gastrectomy has to be accepted as the standard bariatric procedure as it maintains the anatomy of the GI tract. A mild upper hand in type 2 diabetes maltose solution is seen with MGB. With careful patient selection and judicial tailoring of biliopancreatic limb, MGB also can be effective in patients who are compliant in taking their supplements lifelong. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Thomas. So, one doubt. Sleeve gastrectomy, you said it is preferred in vegetarians. Why? Yeah. Uh, actually, what happens after uh, bariatric surgery is a protein malnutrition. You know, vegetarians actually uh, rely upon uh, vegetarian food. They don't even take eggs or strict vegetarians. They don't even take m milk. So, when the anatomy is deformed in MGB, when it compared to MGB, when the anatomy is deformed, there is severe malnutrition of the body. Even if they take, if they rely upon a vegetarian diet, they are definitely, they will go for severe protein malnutrition. But in sleeve, even with vegetarian diet, they can survive with, with minimal malnutrition. Primarily in uh, morbid obesity, the first surgery would be sleeve gastrectomy. Is it, yes. Is it the impression that we have to uh, convey? Yeah. And if it is a failed uh, uh, sleeve gastrectomy, can we convert it to MGB? You have all options after sleeve because you are not distorting the anatomy. You have all options. If it is super obese or super, super obese, never go for a bypass at the first stage. As a primary surgery, definitely go for sleeve, bring down the BMI, then you can opt for other options uh, like MGB or uh, RYGB. Thank you, sir. So, it is an excellent Ajay. presentation. Oh. And uh, one doubt, Ajay, sir. Ajay is Ajay, Ajay is sir. Sir, my doubt is, uh, how does it improve the type 2 diabetes mellitus status? Pardon me? How does it improve the type 2 diabetes mellitus status? Type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, one is the restrictive. Sleeve and MGB, both are restrictive as well as malabsorptive. More malabsorption with the, uh, this thing. And, uh, the scientific parties, different types of hormones are there, adiponectin, ghrelin, and uh, 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 cholestokine, all these hormones will have an effect on the uh, uh, diabetic status. Okay, so Ajay Umar, you have got one yeah. question, I think, one so doubt. Thomas, yeah. uh, it was uh, well narrated and an impartial uh, evaluation of both procedures. Uh, the one comment regarding the outcome, the most important two things are patient selection and technique, then follow. So uh, for example, if you have a gastroesophageal reflex disease, you will not do sleep. If it is yes. a patient with a strong metabolic component which needs to be addressed, we will select MGB. Then the uh, leak rate and the reflex are the two fears in sleep, apart from weight regain. And weight regain is a problem in all bariatric surgery procedures if the follow-up is not fo uh, good. So uh, weight regain is not the fault of the tech surgery alone. It's a follow-up. So we, uh, taking together, we have to individualize the case and select the procedure. Both has got advantages and disadvantages. That is my comment on that and excellent presentation. Thank you, well taken. I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me this chance and my, my JR3 Indira has helped me in preparing the slides. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Thomas. We'll go to the next speaker. Dr. Subhash, please.